I'm going to show you guys how you can build your own superworm farm so that you can breed your own superworms. What's better than free live food? Welcome back to Northern Exotics, guys. We're a pet YouTube channel, absolutely thrives to educate. We talk all things exotic pet related. If that's something you're interested in, consider subscribing. So I said in the original intro just then, I'm gonna teach you guys how to build your own superworm farm. Now we're gonna do this on a small scale. So this is gonna be the perfect video if you've got a handful of reptiles or superworm eating um, animals at your house. You can do this at your house. Now there's gonna be no smell, no dust, it's cheap, we're gonna do it for less than a tenner. I'll stick all the links in the description below. So I'm gonna start off by showing you guys exactly what you're gonna to need to be able to build your own superworm farm. Now keep in mind this is only for a small scale. This is only if you've got a handful of superworm eating animals, some that don't need massive amounts. This is only a small scale. If you wanted to make it bigger, feel free to get a bigger tub, get bigger superworms. If you wanna learn more about breeding superworms in depth, Click on this little video just up here, it's gonna pop up here. That'll take you through to a video where it'll go deep in depth on how to breed your superworms. Let's start building. Let's start off with what you're gonna need. You're going to need at least a three tier drawer setup, some little containers with lids, a small bag of porridge oats, a banana, some superworms, can of fizzy whatever, and a small cardboard box. Let's run through. So I'll quickly run through and explain everything and why you need it. Firstly, this tub, just because it's handy, it keeps all in one little place, nice and easy. I keep the beetles in the top one, the middle one has normally got babies or something like that in it, and the bottom one has got more grown on babies or the pupa stage. Next are these little tubs. Now you don't have to use these little tubs, you can use little deli cups or anything like that. I just prefer using these guys. Now what you have to do is separate all your Morio worms into these one at a time, no food, no moisture, whack the lid on, chuck that somewhere dark, preferably somewhere warm with no humidity. I stick a little tiny hole in the top, not a big enough so it can escape, but big enough so there's a bit of airflow in there. And that's the only way you're gonna get them to pupate. That's why we use these little tubs. The smaller tub you can get, the better. Now they need to go somewhere dark, so I keep them in a cardboard box, chuck them all in, fold it over, chuck it in a dark corner of the room, preferably quite high up in the room because heat rises and they do need a little bit of heat or they speed up the process if they've got a little bit of heat. I do at massive scale these uh, superworms, so I buy those little cups dead, dead cheap because I buy them in bulk. If you want to get some in bulk, I'll stick the links in the description below. So the next process is porridge oats. You don't need anything fancy. This bag cost me 75 pence from the local supermarket, just standard porridge oats. Now what that's used for, that is substrate. So they live in that, they eat that, that's everything all in one bag. You don't need anything else except for a moisture content. They need to have moisture, but you can't give them water or anything they can potentially drown in. You can give them water crystals or banana. Now, I don't give them banana inside, I give them the peel. They have to have something that's got a moisture content in it that's not wet because mold is a big issue in a setup like this. So I use a banana peel, I stick it in for two or three days, take it out, jobs are good. If you're gonna use a banana for the beetles, it might be worth just leaving it in there permanently. Take the banana out and give them the peel. So if you're eating a banana, keep hold of the peel, chuck the peel in with the beetles and leave it in there because they could lay eggs on the actual banana peel. You don't wanna waste eggs by throwing this away, do you? Next, the fizzy can of whatever it is. No, it's only a small can. I'll show you that piece in a bit. And then onto the Morio worms themselves. This cost me £2.20 and I've probably got 50 or 60 in there. That's great for starting your own home mealworm farm. Shall we get on to building it now? So the first thing I do is run around with this, my little temperature gun. I click it and the temperature comes up. Yeah, and so on and so on. So I'll run around and find the best place for it. Now, obviously this is a reptile room. I've got reptiles everywhere. So this isn't a livable room. If you were to put this somewhere, put it somewhere out of sight or something like that. But I don't mind it being on show in my reptile room. So I'm gonna go around a few different places and then um, I could put it here. 
blast it down there. Seven, 77 degrees Fahrenheit. I could put it up here. Now this is a big mealworm and more mealworm breeding area, but the temperature over here, 77. The same as what it is over there. Temperature here, 81. So that's not too bad. Um, what about just up here? Now on this, this is, this is my rack. So this side has got all the heat mats on it. So if I blast it just there, 77, 74, 76, 75. So basically that place there has is the warmest place um, that I've got available for this. So that's where I'm gonna put it. So the first thing you wanna do is decide where you're gonna put it. That's where mine's going. There it is in place now. The first thing you wanna do then is start setting up the actual Moria worms. I keep saying Moria worms, that's because here in the UK they're called Moria worms. In the US and most other places around the world, they're called super worms. I think we call them different because we're just a bit strange. So I'm gonna get the bottom, no I'm not. I'm gonna get that middle drawer out and let's go and set it up. So we're gonna get our porridge oats, pour them into the enclosure. I don't want any deeper than about an inch on the bottom, just because it makes it a bit harder to find them if you do want to find them. There you go, less than an inch on the bottom, nice and level. Next, we have the tedious OCD job of getting the Morio worms out of here and into that fresh new bedding. That bedding is also their food, so in here comes loads of sawdust and stuff like that. I don't want that in there, so the OCD part is I've got to get every single super worm out of this tub and put it into there hand by hand, one at a time. But this needs to be done. This process is the most important process of them all. You need to give your Morio worms, your super worms, around about a week in this new substrate before you start separating them out. Now to get these to pupate into beetles, you have to separate them into those little containers. These little containers. Shut the lid, put them in a dark box, and it takes two to three weeks for them to turn into pupa. And then they're in that stage until, oh, yeah, they're in that stage, in the pupa stage, for again, depending on temperature and humidity and all that sort of stuff, they're in that stage for around about three weeks. Now, to be able to stay in that stage for that long, they need to be, because obviously you think they're gonna be going around about six months, uh, six weeks, because they need to go from here into here for three weeks, and then they're in the pupa stage for three weeks. So they're gonna be about six weeks without having any food. So you need to make sure they've got a really good full stomach before they go in. Now, a lot of people buy them in the tubs like this, separate them straight away into these tubs, and they wonder why over 50% of their Moria worms, their super worms, actually die off. That is why dehydration and malnutrition. This part is very, very important. So it is a must. Leave them in this stage for around about a week, and then you can start separate them, separating them into these little tubs. I'm gonna time lapse this bit just so you can see it a bit quicker. They've all gone in there now. They've all burrowed, as you can see, there's a few there and a few there. They're going around and having a bite to eat. Now you need to give them their water source. Now again, you can stick a little tiny tub of this stuff in there, bug gel. I don't recommend it because this increases the humidity and increases mold, so we don't want that. I'm going to use a piece of banana peel. Stick it in, wet side up, just because I don't want the water or the moisture to go on the actual oats. That's the way I do it. Let's put that back in its drawer, just like that. Remember, that's in the middle. You might want to label it, but I can just about see through the container. Next thing, we're gonna leave it for a week. It's so time to crack open our little fizzy drink and enjoy the time with all of our animals. So they've been in there for around about a week now. You can see them all there. So now it's time to separate them into these little tubs. Again, you don't need to use these little tubs. These are just the ones that I found and they work great. There's a couple of things you need to do to the tub first. One, stick a tiny little hole, either one tiny little hole or two tiny little holes in this tub. If you're doing two, do them one at each end so there's good air flow through the whole thing. Now, open your tub up and find the biggest, the fastest, the plumpest 
um, super worms that you can find, put them in here. No food, no water, and stick the lid on. Make sure the lid's secure so they can't get out. These are pretty secure. I enjoy these. If you wanna if you wanna get these, there's a link in the description. But um stick these inside a box or somewhere warm, dry, and dark, and leave them there for around about two to three weeks and they'll turn into these. Now what they do, I'll show you this now. It's like a little alien, I'll show you a close up in a minute. I'll show you a close up now. But what they do, just as they're going into this pupa stage, they do another shed. Because obviously these do shed their skin. And this is what they look like. Just like this. Now what you've got there is the pupa. Look at that. All these little folds you can see on the side, there is legs that are all folded in. All this stuff is the shed skin, the last skin he had before he went into this stage. He's in this stage, you can see him start to move. They don't need food, they don't need water in this stage, but you can supply air, they still breathe. So it is vitally important that you give them something to breathe about. Don't have too high humidity, but don't have too low of a humidity. And you can now take that and any more of these that you do have, I open the bottom drawer and I put them all in the bottom drawer and then I leave them there for again around about two to three weeks. Now because obviously I've taken some Morio worms, some super worms out of there and made them into pupa, I want to replace them. So go back to the, tack the uh, reptile shop, pick yourself up some more super worms, whack them back in there and then as and when you pupate them, as and when you stick them in the tubs, they turn into pupa, put them in there, grab another super worm, put it back in there. You never really want these to be empty. You always want to have a constant turnover of beetles. When they hatch, you will end up with beetles just like this. Oh, where's he gone? There he is. They don't bite, they don't hurt, they don't do anything like that. They just breed. So let's run through how to set up for these now. My beetles are going to go in the top one. So I open the top one out, nice and clean. I've already cleaned it. I get the porridge oats. Again, around about an inch in the bottom. That'll do. Doesn't have to be strict. Just I, I say around about an inch. And the reason is, there we go, give it a shake. So I'm gonna put my beetles in there. And again, the beetles are gonna live off the oats and the banana peel that I do put in there. That's gonna be their moisture source. Exactly the same care for them. However, you need to make sure that the beetles are well fed. They don't need any hides, they don't need absolutely anything. Make sure they're well fed so that they have good egg laying production. And it's about an inch deep, as you can tell, because the babies, they, they don't give birth to babies, they give birth to eggs. The eggs get laid in the substrate, so you don't want them to eat the eggs. But as the eggs hatch, they wriggle back down and hide around the bottom. So for around about every three weeks after the beetles have gone in there you want to take the beetles out so what you do you stick a toilet roll holder in there or something like that they'll all scurry onto that you start to see the substrate moving a little bit that's because all the eggs are starting to hatch into little baby super worms so that's when you grab the beetles you can stick a toilet roll in there or something like that to for the beetles to hide in and then you can pick that whole toilet roll up out and put them in a different tub for a bit. Get this and just leave this. So, there we go. The babies are in there now and the eggs are in there. So they're gonna start growing. So you can get this one. Move your pupa into a different tub and keep them in a different tub. You can stick them in a little tub at the side here or something. And then again, fill this one with about an inch worth of oats, a banana peel, and then put the beetles back in here to do the same again. About three weeks later, the babies will start to hatch in here and these would have gone through a few sheds. So you can move these into a totally different container uh, for them to grow up in, so to speak, and let these ones grow. And the cycle continues and continues and continues. Always make sure you have fresh beetles. Now, when a beetle's hatched, it takes around two weeks for the beetle, beetle to actually become sexually mature. So that's it. It's just a simple case of your beetles, superworms, pupa, and that's just going to live down there. And that's it, guys. It's a simple case of that. Free live food. And it's cost you less than a couple of quid to set it up. You don't have to use tubs like that. You can go through tubs like this or tubs like this. Anything like that. Just keep in mind that my Morio worm beetles, my super worm beetles, they're called darkling beetles. 
they have been known to fly every now and then, so it's worth, always worth keeping a lid on them. So a setup like that won't really work. But that's how you set up your super worm breeding farm. There are other ways of doing it, which I'll run through on further videos, but that's a great way for production. It's always best to have the darker sort of coloration because they do enjoy the dark. If you want better production, add a little bit of heat and add a little bit of dark. That's all you need to do. Like I say, you can stick other stuff in there. You can stick hides in there and stuff like that. But that is that.